Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will learn about instantaneous power and average power. Now, let's consider a scenario where a transformer is connected, which is a sinusoidal source, is connected to a pure resistive load or pure inductive load or pure capacitive load or a combination of RL and it could be RC and LC etc. also. Now the voltage and current relationship will vary depending on the load. So in case of a pure resistive load, the current and voltages are in phase. So a starting point is same, ending point is same. But in case of an inductive and capacitive and the C a combination, it will be different. And some people use this term to uh, understand or to memorize. So C will, that means in case of a capacitor, I is before V. So you see, this is the capacitor. So I is leading, I is before V. And if you see the last three terms, so the voltage is before I in case of a inductor. So if you can see here, the voltage is before current in case of a inductor. So that means the current is lagging in this case. Anyway, so inductive, the current is lagging. Capacitive, the current is leading. And for RL also, the current is lagging, but it is not as much as it was here. So here it is. 90 degree now in this case it has reduced and maybe it is 45 degree or some now the multiplication of v and i will give us instantaneous power so the instantaneous power because these voltages are changing so the power will also change so in case of a resistance this is the instantaneous power in case of a pure inductance this is in the uh, um, instantaneous power and similarly for here. So for more clarity, let's just separate the instantaneous powers. Now you can visualize that if somebody asks what is the power, you cannot tell what is the exact power. So you have to know the time. So let's say it's saying that at t is equal to one second, what is the power? So you can say that this much is the power, maybe five watts, and t is equal to 10 seconds, it is maybe 10 watts. So for every moment of time, the power is varying and that is why it is called instantaneous power. And same is the case with the all others. Now this is uh, not always very useful in the practical life. And so to get an idea exactly how much is, this, how much is the strength of these powers, then we take the average of power. So average of power is this P average here. So it has some value, maybe let's say 200 watts. But in the case of an inductor and the capacitor, the average power is zero because it is positive and negative equally on both sides. So the average power is zero, but in case of an RL circuit, average power has some value, not zero, but it is not as much as it was here. So the, this is the now the usefulness of the average power. So you, ha you can have an idea how much power is being consumed. Okay, with this background, now let's start the uh, formal definition of instantaneous power. Instantaneous power is the power at any instant of time. And it is given by P, T, T means at any, time, any instant of time T. So power is given by voltage multiplied by current. And in chapter 9 we had described that the uh, voltage at time t can be written as Vm cos omega t plus theta v and current is written as Im cos omega t plus theta i. So we multiply the two here, we get this term and we take help of this trigonometric formula to reduce it further or simplify it. So by using this formula, we can rewrite this as shown here. I hope you can do the cos A plus B, so this and this, and cos A minus B, so this, uh, this minus this, so this is cos A minus B here, and this is cos A plus B here. 
and if we uh, separate the terms so this is this term you can see does not have any t with it so this is kind of a constant term and this is a variable term so this constant term is called time independent part which is a constant line and this is also the average value actually and the variable part is this part here is varying and because of 2 omega the frequency is double so if there was a one cycle of voltage from here to here the power now has two cycles one more thing when the power is positive this is the zero line so above this is power positive so when the power is positive the source or the sinusoidal source is supplying power to the load but when the power is negative then the load is supplying power to the source so like we we had seen in case of an inductor or capacitor it is negative half of the time so that means inductor or capacitor when they get charged they supply power back to the source okay now average power is given by this formula i have not gone into the derivation it is given in your book if you want to uh, follow it is basically integral of the uh, instant instantaneous power so this is vm im cos theta v minus theta i and theta v is the phasor angle if you plot in in terms of phasor the voltage so this angle with reference to zero is theta v and this angle is theta i and since cos zero is equal to one so this value if it is close to zero or the difference is minimal then this power will be maximum so minimum the phase difference the maximum the power okay let's summarize so instantaneous power to find instantaneous power we need to have the instantaneous voltage and instantaneous current similarly to find average power we can also uh, use this formula and here also we got to have the voltage and current in time domain but we can also find the average power if the voltage and currents are in phasor domain or frequency domain and for that we will use this formula that p is half real of v phasor i phasor conjugate so conjugate means the sign is changed so it will be v m i m theta v and instead of plus theta i it will be minus theta i and the real of this thing will be uh, uh, vm im and cos theta v minus theta i so it is same uh, this is not much used but anyway we will we'll use it in one of the examples just to give you some idea okay now let's go to the example number 11.1 uh, this is the voltage given and the current given we have to find instantaneous power and we have to find average power so straight away we uh, take help of the formula so v, p is v into i so we multiply the voltage with the current we get two cosine terms take help of this formula so simplifying we have now cos a plus b so this is cos a plus b term plus cos a minus b from these two and further simplifying we get cos 754 t 35 and in in this case you know the t terms gets cancelled so the angle will be cos 55 So we were here now you can see that this is a constant term does not have t in it so we plug in the value of that 0 0.5753 and multiply by 600 we get this answer rearranging so this is the constant part 344.2 and this is the variable part this is also the average value so as if you recall this graph this is the constant part 344.2 
and this is representing the variable part or the uh, oscillating part. Now we'll use the formula for calculating average power although we know that it has to be 344.2 but we are using this formula and now from here we can plug in the value Vm we know is 120 from comparing these two Vm is 120 and Im is 10 so we'll plug in that and the theta V is 45 and theta I is minus 10 So plugging in the values 45 minus minus 10 cos 55 600 cos 55 will give 344.2 which is the same answer that we had predicted that the constant term. So this is how you calculate the instantaneous power and average power. Let's do the practice problem as well. Same technique. The only difference here is that now in this case the current is in sinusoidal form not cosine it is better that we convert the sine into cosine so we have a fairly good idea as to uh, the phase angles relationship so this is the voltage term current terms in sine we convert this we use this technique that if you have to go from cos to sine you add 90 degree you have to convert sine to cos, you add minus 90 degrees. So since we are going from sine to cosine, so we'll add minus 90 degree. So we're adding minus 90 degree. This I had explained in chapter number 9, so you can just go to chapter number 9 and revise. So minus 9 makes it minus 30. So this is now the current terms in uh, current in terms of cosine. And now we plug in into the formula to find instantaneous power. Putting in these two values. Same technique using this trigonometric formula. Solving. Solving. Further solving. Further solving. So this is the constant term. And we can write this in terms of kilowatt if you want so 3500 watt is 3.5 kilowatt and similarly this can be written as 5.45 kilowatt the rest of the terms remain same so this is the instantaneous power and using the formula we can find the average power same way as we did in the previous example so these are the two values this we have written the cosine terms multiplying Vm 330 and Im 33 putting in the values solving we get the answer to be 3.5 kilowatt so I hope this gives you an understanding as to how to solve this type of a problem thank you okay sorry I, I missed I told you that I'll give an idea about the um, use of uh, phasers. So this was the formula for phaser and it, we can write um, the voltage 330 uh, in phasor form as 330 magnitude and angle 20 and this we can write in phasor form as 33 angle minus, uh, minus 30. So it, since we are taking conjugate of i so the minus 30 will become plus 30 so just plugging in the values and multiplying we get this term and the real of this means uh, the cosine of the angle so cosine of 50 this multiply by half will become 5 4 5 uh, 4 5 and so you get the same answer as 3.5 kilowatt thank you